My name is Lee Wilson and I'm the CEO of Filament Games in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm a lifelong gamer and I actually, as a teenager, played dungeon crawlers on a paper-fed teletype. So I go back a ways with games, but that was on the personal level. It wasn't until about 10 years ago when I was traveling a lot for business and trying to do something with my teenage sons. And we started playing World of Warcraft together. And one night I was sitting in a hotel room in California after spending 20 years in the education business and looking at the screen and realizing that World of Warcraft was nothing but a learning management system with elves and orcs. A very elegant learning management system, but, but, and that was sort of when the light bulb went off for me about could we harness this technology for use in the classroom. I was at Pearson at the time and won a grant to, uh, an innovation grant at Pearson to start exploring the, the area of games and learning. And over the subsequent 10 years, with a variety of uh, companies and projects, uh, became more and more involved in the space until a year ago I joined Filament as the CEO. And I'm very excited to be at Filament because we are doing some of the most cutting edge work on where games fit in the classroom. And that's really what I want to talk about today. Because uh, games are uh, not the least expensive use of media in the classroom. Uh, but there are some places where games are particularly well suited to solve problems that other media, print, lecture, etc., just don't, don't serve students well. So if we think about the typical span of a semester and the scope and sequence during that span, there are usually anywhere from three to five key conceptual waypoints as students move through that content. And at those waypoints, a, a teacher would stu uh, typically try and get students to go deep into the content to make sure that they really got that conceptual concept really mastered. And they would have done a field trip, they might have assigned a writing project, something like that. We see those areas as particularly ripe for games because what games do better than just about anything else is they can reveal the inner workings of a dynamic system. You can actually hand control that system to a student. They can play with the levers. They can really understand how those things interact. So for example, in a game like Reach for the Sun, the student is the plant. They're gathering sunlight. They're building root systems. They're capturing water. And they're understanding how those elements interact with each other. That's far more engaging and more interesting than reading about that on a page. And particularly for students for whom the written word doesn't work, it gives them access into the content. It's an avenue into the, into the instructional content. And it also is a way to really strengthen that uh, key conceptual point in a, in a typical biology class. That's just one example. The places that we see, you know, so we've you've identified one of those places, then the things that a game can do that are particularly strong are it can reduce costs so we can have students do something that's very expensive like run a presidential election campaign, which one of our games allows you to do. Uh, but you can do that in a, in a classroom setting without, without incurring that cost. You can compress time. So reach for the sun game that I talked about. A plant's life cycle lasts an entire growing season, which is even longer than a school year. We can actually take that and make that happen in 20 minutes. And then also give the students in that class period time to reflect on what happened in that game. So we've compressed that time and still revealed the inner workings of that system. Another area where games are very useful are uh, where things are very dangerous. So uh, we didn't write this program, but uh, one of the favorites in our office is a game called Kerbal Space Program, where students build rocket ships and launch them and watch them blow up and have astronauts die and all kinds of fun things. Um, but that's a, that would be a, you know, even just doing model rockets in a classroom is a very expensive thing, much less designing full-size, full-scale rockets. So that's a way of allowing students to have that experience without incurring that cost. And then the last area that games do well, uh, and it relates back to that kind of systems concept, is just revealing abstract ideas, making them concrete, making them real. Our game designers like to say that what they do when they set out to design a game is they'll look at a learning objective, They'll find the verbs in that learning objective, and then they'll build a game around those verbs so that the thing that you're doing in the game is actually the learning objective. That, that abstract to concrete translation is actually where a company like Filament really adds value. So I've been incredibly uh, blessed to, to be able to join Filament and to be part of an incredible team of very creative people helping to solve that problem. And it's a really fun part of the education business to be in.